my dear brethren and sisters and friends, I'd like to greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. It is a privilege for us to come before the Lord, to praise him and thank him for the wonderful mercy and grace and his love shown upon us as we discover every day the love of God upon us because we are not in control of our daily lives and we discover the love of God on daily basis as we wake up in the morning to discover that the Lord still loves us. Our message this morning, the key text is taken from John chapter 10, verse 32, and it says, Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? When we look at the backdrop of what happened in chapter 10, verse 32, we find that Jesus was answering the Jews. And this was an answer to an attempt to stone him. But when we go back and we look at the previous chapters, we find that in chapter 8, chapter 9, and chapter 10, there had been many attempts whereby Jesus was being tested and tempted by the Jews. One of the situations that Jesus came across was a situation whereby a woman was brought to Jesus for having committed adultery. And the Jews wanted to tempt Jesus and find out how is he going to react to this situation. And Jesus, we know the story, Jesus knelt down and wrote names of those who had brought this woman unto him. And each one of them were convicted by their conscience when they re uh, realized that what was reflected on the floor or on the, on the ground when Jesus wrote this was a reflection of their sins. In the following chapter, Jesus gives us a reflection of who he is as a true shepherd. And over and above this, there were other several attempts that Jesus had gone through being tempted by the Jews. One of them was a situation whereby they contended against him in terms of his genealogy, and he said to them, before Abraham was, I was there. And they wanted to stone, me, stone him as a result of this, claiming that he has blasphemed. And in trying to make sure that the Jews understand what Jesus actually wanted to convey as a message, he then gave them a parable. And in the parable, parable he gave them the contrast between the true shepherd and what a hireling would do. And he says to them, I am a good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And I think if we want to really understand what this means, we can visit the book of Psalms, chapter 23, where King David related how a good shepherd would take care of his flock, feeding his flock, taking the flock to the green pastures, making sure that when the flock is, one of them is sick, is anointed with oil. And in so doing, Jesus gave the contrast between what a good shepherd and a false shepherd would actually do. And going, al going uh, along in, in terms of his presentation, we find that still the Jews had doubts in terms of uh, Jesus as the Messiah. And the problem in this case was the fact that the Pharisees, the scribes, had held onto ceremonies, had held onto the beauty of the temple, had held onto the customs that were practiced, and as a result of that, they were unable to identify with Jesus as the Messiah. Although the prophets had given indications and, and prophecies up front of the coming and the birth of Jesus on earth, we find that when Jesus came, as the type, as the antitype of the type, they were still unable to identify with him. And as a result of that, 
in chapter 10, when he indicated that he and the Father are one, there was a great attempt to stone him. And hence, Jesus took them back and said, many, for many, many good works have I showed you from my Father, which of those do you stone him? And their response in this case was that they were not stoning him for the good works, but they were, dis, uh, they were basically stoning him for him having claimed to be one with God. They were claiming that he had blasphemed. This morning, this message comes to us because as the people that are waiting for the coming of the Lord, we might find ourselves in the same situation as the Jews did, holding to, holding to certain maxims and customs, holding to a situation whereby we actually expect that the Lord should demonstrate his love to us, as opposed to us leaning on the evidences that God has given us as our savior. And this is a great danger that we face as a people who are waiting for the second coming of the Lord. It is my wish and prayer that this morning we should lean on God's evidences as opposed to wanting to see daily demonstration whether, whether the Lord is indeed our savior because this is basically what the Jews were leaning upon instead of looking back at the evidence that Jesus had provided to them that he is the Messiah, they actually leaned upon the demonstration. That's why from time to time, they actually requested him to give, him a, to give them a sign or to perform a miracle in order for them to be convinced. There are a lot of warnings that are coming to us today we receive warnings in terms of counsels, in terms of reproofs, in terms of sermons. We go through certain situations in our lives that are supposed to show us that indeed the Lord is with us. The Lord is our savior. And as a result of that, we should be able to hear the voice of the Lord when the Lord speaks to us on daily basis through, through those various intervention, interventions. As a result of that, we should not be like the Jews who actually wanted signs all the time in order for, for them to get a proof that indeed, indeed Jesus was the Messiah. What we also need to realize is that as we keep on closing our eyes, our hearts get hardened even further. And as a result of that, we are unable to hear what the Lord says to us. Amongst the challenges that Jesus encountered was that as you read in the Bible, the 35 miracles that Jesus performed, you discover that even when, when he performed a miracle whereby Lazarus was raised from the dead, we find a, situations, a situation whereby the Jews did not believe in him in fact, they still wanted to kill him. So this is a great indication to us today that we must individually hear the Lord speaking to us. And when every voice is hushed and in quietness we wait before him, the silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God. There are a lot of voices that are speaking in us. As a result of that, we are unable to hear the Lord speaking to us. We therefore need to have a quieted spirit such that we may be able to hear the Lord when the Lord speaks to us. We therefore should not delay any of the moments, any of the privileges given to us when the Lord speaks to us. Because as we delay, with time, the voice of the Lord becomes dimmer or grows dimmer and dimmer to our ears. Although the voice of the Lord remains strong, but our sensitivity to hear his voice grows dim. And as a result of that, finally we remain in darkness and we are unable to hear the Lord. And as Jesus said these words to them, they had a, a profound effect on them, such that those who were carrying stones and who were about to stone him, their hearts were softened. And their hearts, as, as their hearts were softened, 
the stones that they had in their hands dropped down. This is the effect that the voice of the Lord should have, have upon our, our own hearts, softening our hearts such that we are able to turn our hearts uh, that are in a stone format and they become hearts of flesh. And in so doing, we will be able to hear the voice of the Lord. We should pray for ourselves individually and our fellow brethren that each one of us should have a moment that is similar to that of Samuel when the Lord appeared to him and he was able to speak to him. A story is given of a young man who was at the age of 10 attending school and on daily basis his teacher just before lunchtime would give a Bible story and the condition to them being released earlier to go and play was dependent on their obedience. The story goes that on daily basis this young man paid attention but he wasn't actually listening to what the teacher was saying. And as a result of that, on one particular day, the teacher was giving a Bible story about Samuel, and the young man listening, for the first time, he got to hear the voice of the Lord speaking to him. When everybody else left the room and went to play, he, he was left sitting at his desk, and a few, men, few moments later, he approached his teacher and asked him, does God speak to young people today as he did to, Mo, to Samuel in earlier days? And the teacher responded and said, indeed, the Lord is speaking to young people as he did in the time of Samuel. And if that is the question that the young man was able to ask, it is a question that all of us should be asking ourselves. Whether does God speak to us today? Are we able to hear his voice speaking to us? Are our actions on daily basis, our thoughts, our deliberations, are they under the control of the Lord? And if we're able to pray for that, and the Lord is able to speak to us, then the Lord will be able to accomplish his work with us in saving our souls and saving souls of others, such that we may be able to hasten his soon coming. We should guard against the danger of becoming like Jews who are given prophecies about the birth of Jesus. We should guard against a situation whereby we are able to recite prophecies and texts from the Bible but we need to find that the Lord is not actually speaking to us. Because as if that was to happen with us, we are in danger of not hearing the voice of the Lord when he comes to, to take his saved to heaven. It is my wish and prayer this morning that all of us should pray for the Lord to be able to speak to us just like he did with Samuel. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 lists a number of warriors of faith who have been able to hear the voice of the Lord speaking to them. The Lord still wants to speak to us today on a daily basis as he did in the Garden of Eden. Every morning the Lord and in the evening the Lord came and spoke to Adam and Eve, and, and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And Adam and Eve had the choice on a daily basis to choose whether to obey or disobey the Lord. In the midst of the Garden of Eden were those two trees, a tree of life and the tree of knowledge of evil and good. Each time when Adam and Eve approached to pluck the fruit from the tree of life, they also had a choice whether to eat from the forbidden fruit. That's what we are going through on a daily basis. The Lord is testing us on a daily basis, for the Lord is able to save us who are being tested on a daily basis so that he can be able to reward us on the final day. So we therefore need to pray for the Lord to be able to speak to us so that we're able to hear the, his voice. Not only should we be praying for us to be able to hear the voice of the Lord, we should also be praying that we're able to listen to the voice of the Lord. 
And having listened, we should be obedient such that we're able to do his will. This is my wish and prayer this morning in his mighty name. Amen.